Mr Acting Speaker. Thank you. I call the member for uh, Whit Sunday. Thanks very much, Mr Acting Speaker. I too rise uh, this afternoon to say a few words in relation to the Health and Wellbeing Queensland Bill uh, and would like to foreshadow that I won't be opposing the bill. I'd like to uh, echo the sentiments of a number of members in the House who have expressed concerns about the, the resources that have been uh, put to this new uh, statutory authority uh, because I'm sure many of my constituents across my kind of Whitsundays would be wondering perhaps that sort of money would be better spent at uh, increasing funding for programs such as Get in the Game, which was a great initiative of the former LNP government. Uh, but I would also acknowledge that the Palaszczuk Labor government has continued that uh, program as well. And I think a lot of people see us here, come here and have debate, robust debate. Uh, as legislators, and they say we don't ag uh, agree on many things. Well, that was one thing that both sides of the political divide agreed on, the get in the game concept, started by the LNP and then built on by the Labor Party. So uh, I think a lot of sporting clubs across Queensland, far and wide, from the big smoke to the bush, appreciate that program in combating things like childhood obesity uh, and these preventable diseases, uh, chronic diseases that have been touched on by a number of members in the course of uh, these proceedings here this afternoon in the House. Mr Acting Speaker, a lot of us who are old enough will remember Norm of Life Be In It fame and his mate Libby, and I see the member for Gympie nodding there and the member for Gregory, his head's popped up like a little turtle in the goose ponds in North Mackay. And, uh, but in all seriousness, that was a very good program, a very good program indeed that resonated with Queenslanders back in the day. Back in the day, I dare say, when people had the ABC and their own local commercial television station. And uh, it certainly hit the mark, as I recall, because participation was king. And I know that we have great participation rates today, but uh, I don't have any figures here to back this up. But I wonder today, whilst we have some great achievers in world sport, at the Olympic level, the elite level, and I say that as someone who advised the former Howard government on sport policy. We, Australia's history there, Queensland's history there, is second to none, I dare say. We punch way above our weight. Queensland punches way above our weight. We know what we achieve for the Australian team at Commonwealth Games level, at the Olympic level. But it's not just about gold medals, it's about making a difference in your community in addressing the scourge of these diseases, these chronic diseases, these preventable diseases, which as a number of members, Mr Acting Speaker, have touched on, is particularly prevalent, particularly prevalent with battlers, those from low socioeconomic backgrounds, but of course also with our first Australians throughout our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. And I have to think, when we come in here with $30-odd million, Mr Acting Speaker, if this money could have been better spent in putting more money to ramp up getting the game funding and in other promotional matters with an existing government department. There's a number of members who have said, who've said this already, and there's plenty thinking of it, and there's, more importantly, plenty of Queenslanders who perhaps are watching the live broadcast here following proceedings in the House today who are thinking, yeah, why aren't they doing that? Because if you look at it, Mr Acting Speaker, there are a number of sporting bodies. I look at the member for Cairns here, the Northern Pride, my great friend from Innisfail, Ty Williams. I'm sure the Northern Pride would have loved to have had some government funding to go into the Cape communities. He's a pretty handy golfer. I'm sure Uncle Sean and Wagga would concur with that, and Aunty Stephanie. But in relation to the Northern Pride, and I take the interjection from my fellow North Queenslander, the member for Thurangau, but I'm sure the Northern Pride, and they're not even at the elite level, of course, Mr Acting Speaker, as you know, who could go into the community to try and address the scourge of these diseases in countless Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities through the Cape, the Gulf and up in the Torres Strait Islands. There's no doubt about that uh, they have that capacity and the interest and the desire. And of course, that's before we talk about the Broncos and the Cowboys and the Deadly Choices program. And I acknowledge the great ambassadors there, my good friend Petro Simonaceva, Scotty Prince from Calcadoon Country, Preston Campbell, the boy from Tinga, and on it goes. And plenty of female athletes as well across different sports, uh, softball and triathlon, who've donned that ambassadorship to make a difference. We need to get kids, Mr Acting Speaker, off the couch. We need to get them off the lollies and the chocolates. We need to get them off this stuff, the iPhones and the gadgets. We look at those stats, and as I conclude my contribution, what, one in four kids obese, two out of three adults? It's disgracefully embarrassing. 
And like a number of members here in the chamber, I took the opportunity to uh, mark Heart Week by getting, well, my ticket checked, but getting my blood pressure ticked. And uh, whilst not perfect, um, satisfactory for now. And I want to thank Zoe Ardros and her colleagues from the Stroke Foundation for being here at, on the parliamentary precinct this week, and also their friends and partners at the Heart Foundation, doing good things for our community. And uh, contrary to popular belief, most of us, if not all of us in this building, in this chamber, do have a heart and those people do a great job. But uh, in conclusion, Mr Acting Speaker, as I said, I will not be opposing the bill before the House. I do question, though, the resourcing of it and where this money is going, and I'll be keeping a close watch on it. As regional Queensland's only independent MP, I think there would have been perhaps better avenues in terms of investing in sport, sporting infrastructure, getting the game programs, including those vouchers, to get battlers and kids, and Indigenous kids in particular, kids from the bush, kids from our regional and rural communities, more involved in sport. How many parents out there, Indigenous, non-Indigenous, whatever, are making big sacrifices to get their kids to big carnivals? Just getting them to carnivals, say if it's a peninsula carnival, as I look to the member for Cairns, getting them just to get to Barlow Park for athletics or rugby league. It's a big imposition, and we wonder why there's chubby kids running around. And that's before we talk about kids being picked on at school. No one wants that in their right mind, Mr Acting Speaker, and as legislators, we need to do something about it. Where the debate is, is on where the priorities lie, what's the best way forward. As I say, I'm not going to oppose the bill, but I have my concerns, and they need to be noted here in the House today. Deputy Speaker. Thank you. I call the uh, member for